ancient times, when King Arthur and his knights of the round table kept the law in Britain, the signal for a tournament whereby the fighting men kept fit was heard as often as was the call to battle. A gay parade left from Camelot, headed by good King Arthur, his knights and barons and members of his court. They were cheered by all the people from town and country who had come to show their loyalty to their great and just ruler. All gathered at the jousting field to see brave knights break lances in a contest for a purse of gold, the favor of a lovely lady, or to prove their right to a place at the round table. In the royal pavilion were King Arthur himself, his queen, the fair Guinevere, and brave Sir Lancelot, favorite of the king. The wise magician, Merlin, trusted advisor to the crown, and King Arthur's sister, Morgan Le Fay, let the contesting knights make themselves known. The honor of the round table will be served by Sir Knights Bors and Modred. <laughs> Sir Knights Roderick and Meritor will serve the honor of their liege, the friendly King of Cornwall. <laughs> Our knights will make short work of the Cornishmen. Short indeed, if I read Sir Modred's mood right. Whatever good cheer Sir Modred lacks will be more than made up for by Sir Bors. Look at the fat ox. <laughs> Would you give the signal, my liege? <laughs> Sir Knights, Modred and Bors, victors of this tourney, unless there be new challengers. Are there other challengers? There being no new challengers, I declare herewith... I challenge the victorious Knights of the Round Table. I call upon the Knights Bors and Modred to fight me in single combat in the field of honor. Who makes this arrogant challenge? Your Majesty, my name will mean more after the battle is won. For now, let my lance prove my word. Shall we let this rash youth learn how easily a lance may shatter, Lancelot? By all means, sire, since it seems a lesson is needed. Sir Knights, do you accept this challenge of single combat? First of us will accept, sire. Now, fear me, there'll be no challenger for those remaining. Poor fellow. Some winch must have driven him to this folly. We shall soon see whose folly it is. Sir Modred shall meet the challenger first. After him, Sir Ball. boy out there. No, sire, he is not.
never thought to see a boy humble two of Arthur's knights. Nor did Mordred. He knows more cuts than courtesies. Well done, young sir. Today's prize, a golden circlet, is yours. Your Majesty, I had thought to ask a greater boon. A place among your knights at the round table. You have well proved your right to the spurs of knighthood. So be it. <laughs> Tell us your name. They call me Galahad, sire. It shall be Sir Galahad after tonight's ceremonies at my castle of Camelot. of revels is ended. My knights and my good advisor Merlin will accompany me to the sword room. There our young Galahad will be instructed in the solemn mysteries of the round table. This is the round table, council place of my knights. On the wall yonder is my sword Excalibur, given to me in trust by the Lady of the Lake. It is our custom that before assuming their spurs, young knights must stand guard over Excalibur from darkness until dawn. It is also the custom that Sir Kay, custodian of Excalibur, shall instruct them in its history. Take your places, gentlemen, while Sir Kay recalls the story of the blade. This is the sword Excalibur, the sword of Arthur, King of Britain. It is a symbol of his might, his right, and his justice. Behold it reverently and swear again, each and all of you, to defend it with your lives. I swear. I swear. Long years ago, there were certain foolish men who questioned Arthur's crown. To end this doubt, he was given Excalibur the blade which makes its wearer invincible. The magician Merlin was summoned to a dark wood by the Lady of the Lake. At her behest, Merlin took young Arthur to a mystic pool. There they sought the blade which would serve both king and subjects. Suddenly, an arm came up through the water bearing Excalibur. Young Arthur took it and vowed to hold it with honor. This magic blade restored the people's faith in their king. And when our ancient enemies, the Saxons, led by the wicked Ulrich, attacked us, young Arthur charged into battle, wielding the great Excalibur, and sent his enemies reeling from the field. Since that time, peace has reigned in Britain. And it shall remain thus, so long as we guard and defend Excalibur. You know now how great your responsibility is. Thank you. 
Botta. Where's the ceremonial wine for the Watcher of the Sword? Sir Kay wants it on the instant. On the table there. I've not seen you so strict in duty before, Sir Bors. One shouldn't be so strict, even for duty. <laughs> Best get back with the wine, or there'll be a scolding from Sir Kay. Right. He has a sharp tongue. cheer you through the night. It is traditional for the novice standing watch to sustain his strength thus. We leave you now to your meditations. Keep up your courage, son. This is a haunted place in the small hours. I fear no ghosts, sir, boys. Are you going to relieve our young hopeful from his vigil? Yes, the last lot I am. Would you like to come along? I have nothing better to do. The sword! Excalibur is gone! Wake up, you stupid knave! Who has taken Excalibur? I know not, Sir Kay. At least not by name. The, the armor came alive and seized the sword and disappeared through yonder wall. By Merlin's beard, I have now heard everything. How dare you feed me such silly pap? Are you in league Can you with... not see? The boy cannot remember. Ah! A suit of armor came alive? I... I remember taking the wine. It must have been drugged, for when I tried to seize this thief, 
my arms had no strength in them. Beyond that, I can recall nothing. You shall recall a lot more than that before King Arthur is finished with you. I'll take you before him on the instant. March! And so, Your Majesty, we find this rascal, this, this conniver with thieves, asleep on the floor, the great sword gone, and he prattles of empty armor taking it. I do not connive with thieves, and I was not asleep. Sire, the wine was drugged. Only three people touched the wine besides yourself. Serving maid Martha and the knights, Sir Bors and Sir Kay. Are you accusing one or all of them? Sire, I accuse no one. I was merely protesting my own innocence. But the wine made me hazy, and when the armor disappeared in the wall... While Arthur wore Excalibur at his side, Britain was secure. Now that it is gone, only dark events and greatest disaster shall follow. Galahad should be punished. If he's not the thief himself, he's partner to it. Justice will be done when the guilty man is found. Since we know not surely that it is Galahad, I shall deal lightly with him. Galahad, your knighthood is denied until Excalibur is returned. My liege, I shall never rest until the sword is back by your side. I must see the king. I heard your news, I tell you. Let the courier pass. Your Majesty, I bring bad news. King Ulrich of the Saxons has attacked Britain. Bad news indeed. But thanks for your speed in bringing it. Go now and refresh yourself. Already, my prophecy is fulfilled. Ulrich must be certain that Excalibur will be delivered to him, or he would not dare such insolence. Let us take the road that leads to Ulrich. Perhaps it'll lead to Excalibur, too. Well said, Sir Lancelot. Knights, make ready to ride. You may go with us if you wish, Galahad. Don't be downhearted, lad. Great deeds can sometimes make amends for great blunders. You think such a blunder as this, sir? Even such a one. I'm glad you're riding with us against Ulrich. Much honor can be recovered in battle. Galahad, do you really mean to seek Excalibur? Most certainly. How else can I clear my name and become a knight of the round table? And you mean to let nothing interfere with that purpose? Nothing whatever, my lady. Wait, Galahad. I have a measure of wisdom for you. Well, tell me quickly, then. Remember this. The way to Excalibur lies through the enchanted forest. Why do you tell me this? <laughs> I can say no more. Remember, the enchanted forest. Now that we're both under a cloud, let's be friends. You know, that was a merry clip you fetched me at the tournament. But I always did admire a strong right arm. Thank you, Sir Boris. Ulrich and his Saxons are reported camped at the foot of Thunder Mountain. We will attack in small number, the better to surprise him. We must hurry so that we may do battle with Ulrich before Excalibur can be delivered to him. Knights of the Round Table, forward! Go 
shortest path to Thunder Mountain is that one, through the enchanted forest. But no one has taken it and lived. Let us be brave, sire, not foolish. You're right, Modred. We'll take the longer way. Galahad has gone to the enchanted forest on some fool's errand. I must stay with the king. Follow Galahad, he may need help. That is true, Sir Lancelot. What is death to a man like me? You're no more likely to find it in the enchanted forest than in battle with Ulrich. But you, Merlin, what do you seek here in my domain? You know well enough. I seek King Arthur's sword, Excalibur. No man may trespass here. Can you pretend to be the king's loyal friend and bar the way to his sword? The way is not for you. Shall I have... Heed my warning. The way is not for you. You bewitch me. I can't move my arms. Soon there'll be much more you cannot do. What have you done to my eyes? Spring up, flames of darkness. Come of the great sword Excalibur. Will King Arthur fall before the Saxon attack? Don't miss Galahad's Daring, the second exciting chapter of the adventures of Sir Galahad at this theater next week. <laughs> <laughs>